A study was done recently that raises concerns about the potential link between chronic microdosing of psychedelics, which means daily for months, valvular heart disease. In recent years, the trend of microdosing psychedelics has gained popularity with enthusiasts toting a wide range of potential benefits from enhanced creativity to improved mood and focus. However, a recent uh, scientific review published in the Journal of Psychopharmacology raised some concerns about the potential health risks associated with long-term microdosing of, of psychedelics. In particular, researchers are expressing the worry about possible connection between certain psychedelics and a heart condition known as valvular heart disease, VHD. Microdosing involves taking small, sub-perceptual sub doses of psychedelic substances like LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, DMT, the list goes on and on, which will avoid the uh, intense psychedelic effects and the perceptual effects that uh, a lot of people feel has a lot of, of benefits. Valvular heart disease is a condition that affects the heart valves, which play a crucial role in maintaining proper blood flow and pressure through the heart. HD can range from mild to severe and may lead to symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, and fatigue. In severe cases, VHD can result in heart failure, requiring surgical intervention to repair or replace damaged heart valves. Concern raised by scientists stems from the interaction between these microdose psychedelics and the specific receptor in the body known as the 5-HT2B receptor. Remember, we were talking about the 5-HT2A receptor in the brain and how psychedelics interact with that to help, right? So the 5-HT2B is present in the heart and in the valves. And what they're worried about is when this receptor is persistently activated, it's been linked to the development of VHD. Review examined four commonly used psychedelics, namely LSD, psilocin, which is what psilocybin turns into in your body, mescaline and DMT, along with MDMA. All of these substance, substances uh, interact with the 5-HT2B receptor. LSD and psilocybin, or and psilocin, were found to be the most, uh, the most dangerous. Um, because of their their uh, large uh, interaction with the 5-HT2B receptor. Mescaline, however, had a very low HT2B receptor and, and found it, uh, they said it was difficult to draw conclusions, which means they didn't really find any action between mescaline and the heart valve problem. MT also exhibited a minimal safety margin, but its extremely short half-life, I think, reduces the risk compared to these other substances. MDMA had the highest demonstrated risk among the compound studies because it is such a potent HT2B agonist as minimal safety margins for reported microdoses. Furthermore, cases of VHD have been observed in long-term users of full doses of MDMA, confirming its risk. With the exception of MDMA, no studies have been conducted with the specific aim of investigating this potential health risk in a thorough and scientifically valid manner, the research. Four, while there may be general safety concerns about these substances, currently there is a lack of concrete scientific evidence to confirm or refute the existence of a direct link between chronic use of these psychedelics and valvular heart disease. We're going to have to wait for more of these studies to come out before we know the exact direction this thing is going to take. But I'd like to highlight about microdosing versus macrodosing and, and kind of life in general is that macrodosing is far more... Um, uh, eff uh, uh, effective for human beings in changing their patterns, repatterning themselves, and, and positive growth if it's used with integration and, and daily work. I think that the people who are doing microdoses, they're they're getting some help. A lot of times, it helps them get off cigarettes or alcohol, and I think that's a good thing. But it, it highlights this thing that in Zen Buddhism, uh, Zen Buddhist practitioners call the wobbly wheel, right? And, and the belief is, um, the thought is, our life, the universe itself, the whole thing is a wobbly wheel, right? It's got a little lump in it, going to get you where it's going, but it's going to be kind of a bumpy ride the whole time. A lot of times what people are looking for in any substance that they choose to use is a bit of an escape from that wobbly wheel, maybe a rounding of that wheel through some magic pill they can take. It's really important for all of us to realize that it's going to be a wobbly trip the whole time. There is an imperfection involved in, in this entire space-time universe, and the more that we can embrace it, sit quietly with it, and use our own heart and mind and perception to address and, and integrate that fact, the better we're going off we're going to be as humans. And I think we all need to stop looking for some Messiah in a pill that is going to shine up the world and make it perfect and, and easy every day because I don't think it is that. Um, so the, the, the news of this study is it's, it's not, it's a first of its kind. There need to be more studies to be done. It does highlight that if you have some heart issues, you may want to talk to a physician, 
inch into Google a little bit more or wait to see some more of these studies come out before you get into frequent microdosing. Matthew St. Germain on a Monday for a high at nine news. Come on in, everybody. What do you got to say about this? I want I'm a fan of the macro dose, man. I need the full experience. I want I wonder if they're if if this if this has anything to do with the experience that you get when uh when, when you're on these substances as opposed as like meaning like sometimes it can seem extremely too real which would cause your heart to uh to 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 beat faster and and then that's what causing this type of uh reaction what do you think matthew no they're saying that the actually the substances actually fit into a receptor that is on your heart called the 5-ht2b receptor this is beyond any they're saying this happens with microdosing which oftentimes people can't really feel in any way at all uh, except maybe again like a, a general shining up of the day mm -hmm. um so this is actually a chemical interaction with the heart oh, that's why okay, okay. We need to see more of these studies to really know which way we need to go really what i find is a lot of people want to dip in they want to try psychedelics and they're very afraid they might have various ego defenses they might have a bit of a control mechanism a lot of us have just been through so much trauma in life people don't really want to just sign up voluntarily for a little more trauma Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, I think right. that's really where the healing comes is these larger doses that de-pattern the brain that allow you to form new neuronal connections that grow new brain cells and really at times almost shock one into changing one's life. I think that's uh, one of the real powers in psychedelics is that real large efficacy in a very short term due to uh, a larger dose. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't microdose. Now, the number one thing, when they're saying that mescaline uh, is the least harmful of these substances, I got great news. The cactus called San Pedro, also called Wachuma. You can buy it at local nurseries. You can buy it online. It's completely legal. It contains a lot of mescaline, just like peyote, which you don't want to harvest because we're having a lot of problems with peyote sustainability. We want to leave that yep. for the indigenous Native Americans. You can get these legal San Pedro yes. cactuses. You can grow them in your front yard. You can grow them in your backyard. You can find on Google or YouTube how to process them into a powder. You can use this powder in a microdose level, and the cool thing is you can even get to like a half dose or a just under a sub perceptual dose larger than a microdose, and it gives you energy, it opens up your heart, it makes you feel very good, it makes you feel very active and activated, and a lot of people have been doing uh, San Pedro microdoses for years and years and years with, with no real uh, outside. Activated and interesting. captivated, man. Interesting, I, interesting. I agree with you, Saint, 100%. I'd be remiss, though, if I didn't say that I don't know if macro dosing is for everybody. And I say, Reed. let me let me let me give you a, a, a little background on that. So back before micro dosing and LSD and, and mushrooms were cool back in the day, there was people like us that used to take them. Right. We used to do all kinds of pink suns and flying <laughs> pyramids. And, you know, what I mean, but so. Sure. And I, so I had a lot of experience in my peer group. Seeing it like, you know, we dose with like 10 or 12 people. Well, there was sometimes like, you know, and we're not mi micro dosing. There would be times every time, really, that a few people in that group, it was too much for and they couldn't handle it. It was really bad. And I and in certain instances, it can be damaging. So uh, just it, it, it absolutely mm -hmm. is effective. High efficacy on, on macro dosing. Just be careful. Make sure you're in a good environment. It's always good to do it with people that are more experienced in those situations so they can kind of guide the ride. Um, and just, uh, yeah, there's there's so much study that needs to be done in this area um, because micro dosing yeah, you, you, helps you a lot gotta of people. Be a, you you got to be a, at a place where you, you're comfortable with yourself. Yes. Psychologically. Well, sometimes mentally, this helps you get comfortable with yourself. There. It can. And, and Luke, I agree with your call to caution. Number one, if you have a family history of bipolar or schizophrenia, you may want to wait. Number right. two, if you have a lot of trauma, you may want to f uh, find a more psychological talk therapy model to establish safety with these substances. And uh, the number one uh, issue I've really seen with a lot of people in, in doing psychedelics in group situations is uh, Abrahamic religious programming. I've found that people who have a large deal of Abrahamic religious programming from their family and to have a harder time or tend to be for whatever reason, when you see people have a harder time, tend to have this real fundamentalist religious upbringing. It's one of the things that starts to happen first and foremost in seeing a greater vision of who we are and how we are connected is you begin to uh, have messages arising from the center of your mind and the center of your being that are ex uh, completely contrary to everything you've been taught by the people that you love the most. I think oftentimes 
schism between uh, an arising truth within oneself that you know to be true, flicting with your messaging and trauma from the way you were raised, uh, causes a schism in people's mentality. And I've seen people really have intense problems, and I've seen some people even need psychiatric help because of that. I would, I would always caution that psychedelics are not for everybody. Agreed. I think they, that they can be used safely the more we get education and psychedelic mentorship. They can be uh, used safely by a majority of the population. Um, and the number one thing is psychedelics are not what we need to continue to look at as the things I keep saying. Let's look around our society. If it is serving us and those that are less fortunate or less privileged than ourselves, if the answer it is not, let's start navigating as a family towards a solution that serves everyone who lives on this planet because we're all born here. We're all going to die here. We're all one family. I doubt that we're going to be able to fix this thing as long as we continue to make a line of us versus them, exclude certain people from the table and from food and from housing and from benefits of being earth brother or sister. What do y'all think? Kirk. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, oh boy, down the rabbit hole of Matthew St. Germain. That, that man preaching. Yeah. That man preaching. <laughs>